thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for an info-packed podcast filled with honest advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J. I'm Shaw Barrett. I'm Cheryl Phipps. And I'm Wendy Valor. And this week we have an awesome guest. We've got Michelle Scott. Um, She's a thriller author who has also got books that are optioned for um, film and television, which we're super excited about. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Welcome. Hi, ladies. Thank you for having me. (laughs) So um, what we'll do is we will, I'll read out Michelle's bio and then we'll get into the questions and and find out all about your amazing career, Michelle. Mm. Okay, so Michelle, <laughs> Michelle Scott is a New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and USA Today and Amazon bestselling author of over 40 novels. She's written in various genres, including thrillers, cozy mysteries, young adult mysteries, fantasy, and women's fiction under her two main pen names. Her thriller, Daddy's Home, from her Holly Jennings thriller series, which is written under her pen name of A.K. Alexander, has sold over 1 million copies and was the number one best-selling book on the UK on Amazon and number four in Amazon.com. Her thriller, Mummy May I, was number two on the UK Amazon list as well. Her wine lovers mysteries are currently optioned for screen and her Holly Jennings series is currently being adapted for television, which is super exciting. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite the bio. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, when I hear it, I go, wow, I, I, I did more than I thought I'd done. <laughs> what a nice. Yeah. So, so let's begin at the beginning. Like, how did you get into writing? Like, where, where did you all start? Oh, gosh, I, there wasn't, I mean, I always knew I wanted to be a writer from that time I was a little kid. So uh, really, really young, eight, nine years old, I knew. Mm -hmm. And I wrote my first little novella probably around 12. And um, I went to, when I went to college, I majored in journalism because my mom said you should be a little more practical you know making a living as a as a fiction author is not going to be easy so that is what I did um but uh, as the universe the gods however we want to look at it would have it uh, my oldest son was uh, a surprise and born preemie and when I brought him home I wanted to be home with my son so I said, this is the time I'm going to write my book. Now, this is 31, 30 years ago, almost 31. He's actually 31 this week. Wow. So um, I took a correspondence course with Writer's Digest, which I don't know if they're still around or not. And it just went from there. And it took me uh, 12 years before an agent picked me up and Probably, I think I did eight full manuscripts prior and had as just about as many partials. Uh, and then once I signed with an agent, it went very quickly. It was, you know, within, I want to say a month because she already had something in mind as to where to take it. And then what I didn't know at the time when I wrote the first book was that they were going to ask me what the next two in the series were about. So the agent calls me and she says, they want to know what the next two books in the series are about. I said, oh, I didn't know we were doing a series. And she said, <laughs> yes, they would like you to do a series. I said, okay, when do they need to know? And she said, by the end of the day, if you want a deal. And I was like, <gasps> oh, okay. Oh, no pressure. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, my all I had to do was write out a, basically a paragraph idea for the next two. And so I did. And, you know, that evening we celebrated with uh, Chinese food. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wow. great. I didn't cook that night. And so were they, would you call them cozy mysteries or just mysteries? Like what were you writing at so, the time? Yeah, the, 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 the first several series or the first two series that I did uh, were cozies. Mm-hmm. And then I, a lot of the backlist stuff that I've been trying to get an agent with, they were thrillers Mm -hmm. and, um, it just, you know, I got really close a few times and then it would fall through. So I kind of got categorized as that, well, not kind of my agent kind of categorized me as a a cozy mystery author. Mm -hmm. And I really still wanted to do the thrillers. So when Amazon did the whole KDP program that, you know, the Kendall program publishing, 
I thought, well, I'm just going to upload all of this backlist that I have, oh. but I'm going to put a pen name to it and I'm just going to go with it, see what happens. And nothing really happened for like the first year. And I would check my, uh, my numbers, you know, cause they go in real time. Mm -hmm. And one morning I, I was checking the numbers and daddy's home was like, it was just clicking and I'm, I'm real, I'm calculating how much money is, is <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I yes. <laughs> right? It was a lot more than what I'd made in traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. I could tell you that a lot, yeah. a lot more. And I was super excited. And then mommy may I did the same thing. And I really don't know. Well, I have an idea what happened was a blogger picked up daddy's mm -hmm. home and, and that's just how it happened. And, and it's, it's akin now to like our TikToks and social media, mm -hmm. right? Blogging back yep. then was mm -hmm. how you, yes. how you, right. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. I kind of wish it was still like that, but when did that happen? Like what year was daddy home? That was in 2011. That mm. was 2011. Yeah. yeah. So those are the days of, so do you know, happen to know the blogger who was? I don't. No. I, I, I don't. Yeah. yeah I wish that I was did. when, Blogs were hugely um uh what's the word? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Oh, that's so yeah. cool though, Michelle. What a mm. <laughs> I love it. Mm. So, yeah, so did you, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And so what did you do then? So were, were the next books in the series already published? So did it just kind of roll on from there? No, so with those books, that series, the Holly Jennings series, what happened was then Amazon started their own divi publishing division. Mm. So they, and they took a pretty small group of us. I think there was about 15 to 20 authors that they came in. They started Thomas and Mercer. I'm not sure if that's when they started Montlake, but there were a few divisions they be, they started, right? And so then they came in and they offered really nice advances, mm. uh, nice royalty rates, and, and marketing programs. Mm. So I sold them uh, Daddy's Home, uh, Mommy May I, and then a, a second book uh, in the Holly Jennings series, Blood and Roses. Um, and then, you know, an interesting thing happened. We were all kind of, all these authors were like really riding high and mm. we're selling lots of books. And within a matter of, I don't know, a few days, it just went and crashed. And mm. we were all like, what just happened? Mm. They changed the algorithm. And I think, oh. and I'm not sure why uh, I have, mm. I have thoughts on that, but um, mm. so uh, over time I went back in and I'd sold through on, on advances. And so I, I got my rights back. I, I still don't have on one of the books, but um, I did ask for my rights back. And so I, then I went back and self-published them again. Mm. Um, Isn't that crazy? I, I'm, that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm basically all self-publishing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Isn't that amazing? That algorithm, <laughs> it's happened a couple of times, hasn't it? And, you know, along the way and all of a sudden, boom, income just goes bang down. You mm. know, and it, it also used to be that way in traditional publishing, as far as in the mystery genre, particularly the cozy genre, or I would say genre fiction, where you were like a, a mid-list author, right? Every few years, instead of bumping up the advances, there'd be a new group of writers and you could either make a decision to stick with or you mm -hmm. could not 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 stick with right yeah. so yeah you you would see that happen yeah. um yeah. so it's it's just you know writing is um writing is a real passion right you have to have it within you that if i never ever sell a book i'm okay i'm going to keep writing Right. Mm -hmm. And if you have that, you can never have the mindset in this that I'm going to go make a gazillion dollars at this or I'm going to be a bestseller at this. It's a nice goal. It's a great dream. But if you're not, if you don't love what you do, because this is not an easy thing, yeah. go, you know, go take up something else, play mm -hmm. tennis, take a piano. I don't know. But writing, you've got to to really be in this because this is what you love doing mm. amen sister 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally agree because otherwise, because there's so much that you're not actually in control of. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you've, uh, exactly. you, you know, you can control what you can control in terms of the production and your writing and your love but mm. but you even if you're published by amazon you're still at the whims of, of <laughs> the <Amazon>. algorithm gods <laughs> it's mm. funny it's funny yeah. that it even happens to our amazon like to their uh-huh. own inference like you would expect them to yeah, yeah. i think that's amazing. really weird i think that you, you'd be you'd be nurturing your own store wouldn't you you would be and your and your own authors but apparently not yeah well and it just also depends on it's it's still it's a numbers game but you know it's still a business and it's units and how many and that's how they look at it how many units are being sold that's across the board whether you're amazon or you know or you honestly an indie author a self-published author should look at that what look at it that way too like if i put advertising dollars behind one series and i put it and then i put another set of advertising dollars behind another series I'm going to give it a, a certain amount of time. And then if I see one pulling way stronger for me, I'm going to move that budget, that marketing mm-hmm. budget over, mm-hmm. you know, and that's not always easy because I might really, really love that other series and be like, well, why isn't that? And that, mm-hmm. I mean, cause I'm, I'm experiencing a little bit of that currently. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I, I thought I would have thought that that would have been what took mm-hmm. off. So yeah. it's, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's hard. The having a, again. Being a creative and having a business sense is not always easy. Mm-hmm. No, no. <laughs> it's kind Very of the true. opposite of what you're saying. So you're saying to be a writer, you need to have to love it and be passionate about it and just do it whatever may come but then you when you're actually publishing and you're doing the business side of things you actually have to have a different hat on and it's not about the book you love the most it's about the book that does the best yeah 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 it it, it does make it hard but I think that once you do reach that point where you are publishing you you have to you have to wear two hats Mm -hmm. uh, especially as an indie author and you have to square away some time you know, you have to like daily say, okay, this is my block of time. I'm going to do all my administrative and my business. I would even suggest squaring away time for education because I'm currently taking courses on marketing. I'm always reading books on writing. You can never learn enough. I'm, I'm listening to podcasts like yours or whatever that is. I, I, I say square away some time for that. But most importantly is your, is your writing time, right? That's mm-hmm. your that's sacred yeah mm-hmm. yeah yes yeah. yeah. making total <laughs> sense <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> making a note yeah. <laughs> so, do you do you still publish under the michelle scott name or are you mostly focus on the ak alexander what's your no i do michelle scott as well i um so i'm currently working on a new cozy series new mystery series it's not mm-hmm. quite cozy it's a little more rom-com but it's definitely heavy it's all mystery Mm -hmm. um so I'm doing that but I already have the have it churning in my head for the next thriller so I'll Mm flip-flop I I did take a little hiatus for personal family reasons and it was quite a quite a long hiatus honestly it worked out the way it was supposed to and I'm glad I did what I did but now I'm back in the game and I really like the idea of like I can write this funny kind of quirky off the wall cozy which is what it is and then I switch and go write like a dark serial killer mm. thriller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that totally funny? opposite. Yeah. Is it like a kind of palate cleansing thing for you? Or is it just that, like, like, it's quite a juxtaposition, these two very different styles? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes I think, and this goes back to writing what you love, like, sometimes I think, wow, if I just focused because I still make quite a bit more out of the thrillers. And I think, well, gosh, if I just focused on my thrillers, I could probably double my income. But I really love writing the cozies. I really love writing the mysteries. So I don't want to not do that. So it's just, I'm kind of of the mindset, like if I get an idea that I love, I'm going to I'm gonna explore it and, and probably run with it. It's, if it sticks with, if I get an idea in my head and I don't write it down, let's say, and it sticks with me for like, several days then I'm gonna write that but if it goes away after a day or two I don't I don't I'm not gonna write it (laughs) I'll forget it (laughs) so how much time do you dedicate to each genre do you do you have a you know is that one book a year for each or two or three yes yeah right now it's about 
I'm, I'm trying to get back up to speed where it's one book on each, but I, the hard part also with that is that we, we have voracious readers out there when they mm. love something, mm. they want the next book, right? Yes. So if I can speed up my writing pace, I, I would, um, mm -hmm. but I also want to put out a quality book. So mm -hmm. When I do that, I know I have to slow down because I don't always do my best work when I'm when I'm doing it really fast. Mm, yeah. And I'm fortunate that I have this huge backlist because what I'm discovering now is that because of of uh, like TikTok and Instagram and this these new social media platforms, that I am finding a whole new readership and then a different demographic that I didn't have prior that didn't know about these books, you know? So I'm promoting backlist and I'm seeing, I'm seeing sales. So I spend quite That's a bit fine. of time looking at that while I'm writing just, you know, to see, because that is one positive that I think has happened with, with eBooks and, and with social media is that you can tap into to what you wrote previously and find mm -hmm. new readers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And those thrillers, I'm oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> those thrillers are quite big too, aren't they? Your thrillers. They are bigger books. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But what's funny is I'm finding the cozy I'm writing just keeps getting longer and longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are okay. you a plotter or a pantser? I have to know. Am I, a, I'm sorry, I'm, am I a what? A plotter or are you a oh. pantser? I'm a plotter. Yes. I, <laughs> I have tried to do the pantsing, I can't. But what I have found is that I sometimes will go off track of the outline, but I always, what I like about having an outline is if I do go off the rails, and then I get to like, say a few chapters out of it. And then I go, I don't know where to take this. I can go back to my, my outline. So it's kind of like having a map. I mean, that's how I look at it. It's like a map mm. on the road, right? We can yeah. go off-roading a little yeah. bit. It's probably going to get us to the, to where we want to be. But if I get too far out, I can always turn around and come back and go, right. oh, you know what? let's stick with that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so are you how, like um how many of the AK Alexander books do you have like is that a, a large proportion of the 40 books or is it no no most of them are Michelle Scott books honestly okay. um so I have let's think <laughs> there's four there's four in the Holly Jennings thrillers and then in book five I'll do next and then there is uh Mommy Mae's a standalone there's a book I wrote Covert Reich is a standalone and the cartel. Do I have anything else? I think those are it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and so those are all backlist titles. <laughs> are you um so what kind of marketing are you doing on those backlist titles for those those two different series? Like are you yeah. Yeah, really the F Facebook ads still. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. took a course um and so did my assistant. We took a course on Facebook ads. Mm. And they seem to actually be working and another thing is is the social media, and I'm I'm also taking a course on TikTok because it's so foreign, right? Yeah. To, yeah. Which is not. I feel like the old lady on there. I'm like, this is not my wheelhouse. But no, you're all. not. Don't we? You <laughs> you're not alone. So yeah, so yeah, I think um, those are. That's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, uh, building my newsletter list that you can, you know, uh, those are always your loyal fans. Yeah. you know those are your readers so having a good a good marketing plan is really important and having a if you can have a team in place and even if that team only consists of one other person than yourself I, because you, you want somebody to bounce ideas off of I mean my assistant Jen and I we just put some ads together and I honestly did not think this one particular ad I was like oh, I don't see how that's going to work that's the ad that worked. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's, it's always the way. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? Always. Yeah. There's, there's always. no golden secret, is there? Yeah. It's just, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, um, and, yeah. <laughs> and I'd say for those that don't have an assistant, you could do it with fellow authors because mm. it's just getting that alternative point of view. Mm. And like you say, inevitably, it's the one that you think, oh, I don't know, that weird orange colored graphic with, you know, mm, some yeah. ridiculously yeah. small amount of text, for example, is the one that mm. just picks yeah. up. Yeah. That's very true. And it's really good advice to get involved, like whether that's on Facebook or, I mean, back in the day, I belonged to a writer's group and I would actually physically go there every Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And there was, yeah. I think, six or seven of us. So, you know, that's important. It's also important though, to remember that um, constructive criticism is, is, is very valuable. But at the end of the day, I tell writers that if you feel strongly about something that you've written and you have somebody telling you, oh, what, I don't like that, or that was, stick with your gut. It's your story, mm -hmm. right? So, because everybody's going to have an opinion. Yeah. Of course. In fact, yeah. mm -hmm. I received that valuable piece of advice from my mentor, Mike Sirota, who I call Yoda, and he was like a dad to me. And he, I was in his group, his writer's group. And I kept getting like kind of this bombardment a little bit by a couple of them. And he took me aside and he called, he always called me kid. He goes, you know, kid, I think you just have to go right because everybody here is just messing with your brain a little. Yeah. So go right, bring it back to me and I'll look at it. So oh, wow. sometimes just even having one person is, mm -hmm. is good enough for that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's so true. That's like, and I also think that sometimes writers, if you're in a writing group where they're critiquing, they feel like they have to be critical. Like that, that's mm. that's kind of like that. They're more yeah. critical mm. than than mm. a reader or someone else who just yeah, mm. it's a because it's their job to do it or something like that. They feel like mm. they have to be more critical. That's really good advice. Right. So, yeah. yeah Can, could you tell awesome. us a bit about your um your process for writing? Oh yeah. So I start. I mean, actually, and I can't take claim on this but there is a series of books called how to write a damn good novel how to write a damn good mm. mystery by an author named james frey yeah and um they're older books they were written years ago but his process and then i kind of have adapted it to my own but it's it, it's it really became beneficial especially when that agent told me they want to know what the next two books in the series mm. are about so I start out with um, with my what ifs, but, you know, which is very easy, whether it's a thriller or a cozy, like what if somebody was murdered? And then I always go, I always go to the victim first. And I start with, um, first I start with character interviews, almost as if I was interviewing you for a job, mm -hmm. but a little more personal, right? Mm -hmm. So, or for a friendship or what, whatever, marriage, I don't know. But like, you're looking at that, you're, you're asking questions as basic as how old are you? What's your hair color to what's your, you know, your political view, stuff that may not ever come out into your book, but you get to know your characters so well that they really feel you, you know, three-dimensional, like they're real people and people want to spend time with them. Cause that's essentially what they're doing when they're reading your book, they're spending time with your characters. So I do that. And then I jump into um, character journals, which even if I'm not going to write the book from first person and I've switched, I've, I have, I do first person in some and third person in another in others, but I always write my character journals in first person. So I'll do, I'll do the, the victim. I'll do my antagonist. I'll do my protagonist. I'll do pretty much not every character, but every major character right. will have a journal. They can be anywhere from two pages to 20 pages. So it's a lot of back. But, but here's what's interesting about that is that it, you, your plot comes from your character journals. Cause you start, as you start figuring out people's personalities, who they are, what's important to them, it sort of dictates plot. It's really interesting. You're like, oh, I didn't know that about that person. I could do this here, right? And so, once I get through that, then I um, I do I do plot outline. And I used to do my plot outlines used to be let's say um, like up to a page, a chapter, just you know, really extensive. Now they're like two three sentences. They're really short. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times I'll do, I'll do say like the first 10 chapters or first five to 10 on my plot outline. And then I go from the ending in the middle can get a little, that's where sometimes it gets really flexible for me. Right. And I go, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to go this way or that way. And ideas come. And, and mm-hmm. so that's a little bit of the beginning process. And then once I start writing, I tell writers, you just, pardon me, puke out that first draft, (laughs) right? Just don't obsess over. And, you know, I I just saw or heard something on Alessandra Torre wrote something the other day about interviewing Dean Koontz and how he spends all this time um, going back and rewriting, rewriting, rewriting page one, you know, doing this. He spends like 14 hours hours a day now I don't know about you guys or ladies <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a parent I have other stuff going on I don't have that flexibility yep. mm-hmm. no. right so I have a very I don't have 14 hours to sit and write I that would be amazing if I did mm-hmm. but I just don't so what I say to to writers is especially beginning writers because you can be overly critical censor yourself and, and just be like, oh, this isn't right. This isn't, you know, just keep writing. Just look at your outline, keep writing because the real writing then comes in the editing. That's yeah. where when you go back and do draft two, draft three, and even draft four, I used to do up to six drafts. I now do about three drafts. I feel comfortable with at that point to send it on to an editor. Mm-hmm. But I would say, don't, don't slow down because you don't feel it's just right. Mm-hmm. Like even for me, when I'm writing now, um, and I'm on a roll, I love dialogue and I'm on a roll with dialogue, but I know I need to set the setting or the scene, Mm -hmm. but I don't have that super clear in my mind. I just know it's a coffee shop or whatever. I'll just put in parentheses and bold coffee shop and then, you know, kind of asterisk. So I know I have to come back later and fill Mm -hmm. that that piece in. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So I've got a question just going back to the character journals. Do you have journal prompts as you're writing those it was your characters I should say are writing those journals like how do you know what to uh, yeah where do you go with that I kind of like I said I start with the victim so I go into the victim and like how did I wind up dead who would have wanted to kill me I can't believe right. this happened to me yeah, yeah. you know and then I start talking about like it from that per, from that perspective that character's brain like like what were they involved in who who didn't you know who who did they love who loved them who did they hate vice versa and you just start going that way and then so they start telling you who these other characters kind of are so that becomes a prompt within itself you see what I'm saying Mm -hmm. so it's kind of free-flowing that's where the that's where it's not so structured like that all of that goes into the structured outline but that's where free-flowing writing kind of comes and a lot of times I handwrite that. Yeah. I will. I do a lot of handwriting still. Yeah, it makes yes. sense. It's kind of like unraveling, um, unraveling a puzzle, or you know. So you've got the central piece, which is your victim, and then you've got all these little threads all around them, kind of thing. It's very yeah. cool. I've never heard it just that yeah. method before. I think that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. And you could well, use that. It wouldn't have to be for mystery. You could use it for anything. Yeah. You know. You can use it for anything. And what's great about it is like what you just said, it's kind of like a puzzle. It's exactly how I look at it. I go, okay. Cause sometimes as I'm getting through the, through, through the chapters, I realize, oh, wow. Chapter nine should really be chapter 13 Mm -hmm. and, you know, start piecing it together until it really feels good. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's, it's very fun. It's sometimes it's a, it's a difficult mental exercise, but it can be really fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing more satisfying when the pieces actually lock in and you're like, yes, yeah, that's that's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> that's where it's supposed to be. I just had that moment the other day. I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's oh, that's that's, awesome. a, that's essentially my process. Yeah. Nice. Very that, good process. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, is there like particular to thrillers, um any advice for aspiring thriller authors or anything that you think that you have to include? Obviously the dead body, for example, but is there something yeah. that, that amps up the tension or how do you make it a thriller in that way? Well, I think whether you're writing a thriller or a mystery really doesn't matter. I think the key is, and there is an argument as to what's more important, characters or plot line. 
thr thrillers tend to be more plot driven. However, when you're doing a series, what is really important overall is your characters, because if people don't like your characters or at least or even hate your characters, whichever way it is going to go, you want them to at least love your main, you know, your protagonist. Mm -hmm. But if 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 they don't, they're not going to pick up book two or book mm -hmm. three. They're not going to continue mm -hmm. and they're probably not even going to finish book one. So um but as far as elements within the thriller, thrillers and mysteries are different because in the in the in the mysteries you need your red herrings and you need your clues and you have to take them down a different path and you don't know the reader doesn't know who the killer is. The goal there is for the reader you, you want to get them to a place where they they think they might know who did it. You give them enough information so that when they get to the end they don't go oh. I, I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to get them to a place where they, they look back and go, I thought maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, but I wasn't quite sure, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. want to give them that. And then the, the, the thriller, you tend to know who the, at least you're, you, you get into the killer's head. There may be a surprise at the end as to if, if um, my main character knew the killer or, or somehow had some kind of connection, but you, you do tend to get into the, th the, the killer's head at some point and, mm -hmm. and, and, or, and know who they are. Um, that's really the big difference between the two, mm -hmm. I find. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and so how did, so let's talk about the, um, the film rights, the, the options that you've had on the two different series. Like how does, how does that come about? How does it even happen? Explain it to us all. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it, it didn't come about in the way that a lot of these do come about. So it, it, it was just honestly luck and happenstance. It was <laughs> a situation where uh, I went to a writer's conference many, many years ago with a couple of friends that weren't writers, but interested in writers and want to check out the conference. And they loved my wine mysteries. And so the wife said, oh, can I, uh, can I give some of these to my friend? He, he produces uh, shows. TV shows. I said, sure. Yeah. No, and no. Then, <laughs> no, I'm not going to no, do that. No, that's not, that's, no. Um, so she did. And, and I didn't hear anything. I didn't think anything. And then I received a, I'm trying to remember because this is so long ago. Um, I mean, this is like 2010 maybe before that it was before it was yeah it was like 2008 2009 and I received a call from a producer and he said oh I happen to have your wine mysteries now I asked my friends is this the guy that you gave it gave them to and they said no so I didn't I I didn't know but he wow. wanted to meet me so I went to LA and I met with him and he loved them and we he optioned them and we at that time had um actually Jennifer Love Hewitt was really interested but then she went on and did a different project and and Vincent kept trying you know going in different directions and it didn't it nothing clicked so then I actually had the guys from um I had a boutique publisher publishing some work for me and they had a connection with the guys that do that did Mad Men and The Walking Dead those guys came in and optioned, but then uh, when we had a we had a, uh, a showrunner and everything for it, and but then there was a contractual dispute on her end, and that got dropped. So then mm -hmm. nothing happened. So then nothing happened. I I had this hiatus my due to my my father's passing and some other things. So I didn't write. I actually went in and and started um, uh, running our family business. And when um, a few years ago, then I decided I'm gonna, it's now time, it's a good timing for me to get back into writing full time. And out of the blue, I get a call from Vincent who had been the original producer. Oh, wow. And he says, 
I don't know if you still uh, own the rights to these or what's going on with them, but I was looking at a bunch of my backlist stuff and I still really love these stories. And so this was 2019 and, um, or December, 2018. And I said, yeah, absolutely. And so now we, um, we a little bit further along, right. And we have, and I, I wish I could announce here, ladies, I can't yet do the contracts, okay. but we have a, a, a great, great actress. You'll know her. Um, attached, an amazing award-winning screenwriter, wow. and just uh, wow. some really cool stuff happening there. But then going back to remember, so this is how it's all worked. Going back to my friends who gave the books to to their friend. I didn't know who their friend was. Um, when I was looking over contracts, the the producer who's doing the wine lovers, he's giving a percentage to this other guy like a 5%, 5%. And I said, well, who is this guy? He goes, well, he's a friend of yours. You know him. I said, <laughs> I don't know this guy, Brad. Like, what are you talking about? And he goes, no, that's how I got your books. Oh. And I, said, I said, okay. And he says, and he's a good friend of mine. And I said, can I have a conversation with him? And he said, sure. So I get on the phone with him and he goes, you don't know me, but I know your friends. Christy oh and Joey God. and that's how I got your books and he says I don't want anything from from this deal what I want what I but I know that you write all these thrillers and that's what I'm interested in he's <gasps> like I passed the, the other books on to Vince because that's what he does but I want to look at your thrillers so <gasps> that's how all of that and came so about. This, this other guy's doing the the Heidi Jennings books yeah. oh, Holly Jennings oh, Holly, so yeah. Holly. Holly. Yeah. yeah we're actually working on it together it's it's each um, project is a very different feel. Uh, mm -hmm. The Wine Lovers is, is, you know, being adapted. And I really don't have any creative um, input on that. And I'm totally fine with that. This other deal, um, I'm, I'm involved with the screenwriter. I, like I speak to her every, almost daily. Um, I speak to Brad daily just about. So it's, it's a really different, they're different, two different projects and, and, it can go either way like that. You know, it just really depends on, on contracts and what each producer and team, how they want to go about doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, what yeah. an awesome story. And I also think not just the, I, I would say it's serendipity. It's, it's not just luck. Obviously yeah. you had the, had the goods to, to go the with the, yeah. with the yeah. luck, you could, but also the time span. It's not, it's not yeah. an overnight thing. It's not a one year, two year. We're talking a, a decade really, yeah. aren't we? Pass. It gives us hope. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's the thing. That's why I said from the outset is that you have to really love this because mm. it does take time. I can remember at one point, what, the first time I spoke at a conference, I was introduced as an overnight success and I had to laugh when yeah. I got up there. I said, yeah, an overnight success, 12 years in the making and as many mm. manuscripts, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. you just got to keep plugging away at it and uh and I always when I write I see things very visually so I see movies I see mm. tv I see I've always done that and and I always in the back of my mind it like put out there gosh it would be so great if that if that happened and so when you say the word serendipitous that's that's accurate yeah yeah, yeah. So, uh, congratulations to you yeah thank so, you, so you. Thank you. It's really fun. I still like it's very surreal still. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think I don't think it will be real um until I see it on the screen. Yeah. 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 So can so we break cool. it? Can we break it down a little bit? Because there's a couple of things that if someone's never heard of what an option is, for example, or how it works, could you just sort of explain what that is and, and kind of why it did take so long and how it works when you're kind of dealing with um, well, for, for me, I, yeah, so the, an option is when a producer comes in and they, uh, they, they basically option the, the right, the TV and film rights. So, so when you're publishing, uh, let's say you are self-publishing and a big publisher wants to come in, Random House and Thomas, whoever it is, and they buy your book rights, don't ever sell your TV and film rights. Mm. Don't, don't ever do that. Okay. And even 
look at your audio rights as separate rights. Look at everything as a separate, okay? And then negotiate the best deal you can. But I always say, get at that point, get yourself an agent and they'll, they would give you the same advice. And so when a producer comes in and he'll option your television and film rights, it's for a certain period of time, typically. And you can always re-up the option. And they might give you a, a few thousand dollars for it. They might give you $500 or it could just be a, 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 an agreement between the two of you that they're going to go shop it. And, and you have a, a real trusting type of relationship that way. But you have to know who you're working with um, to, to be willing to do that. So it's um, they'll come in and say option for a year. Then they can re-up the option every six months or every every year, depending on how you want to do that. Um, and you, when, when, when they do option during that period of time, if another producer comes in and want, and is showing interest, you're bound by contract. So, and it's just not good practice to say, oh, oh yeah. You know, so in fact, I contacted Vincent before I ever said to Brad, yes, you can option these, these thrillers, um, only out of like their, they have a relationship and, and I was introduced, you know, it, mm -hmm. in that way, mm -hmm. I, I, you never want to step on toes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, it's professional yeah. respect, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's professional respect. Yes. Yeah. So that's essentially what that, what the, how that looks. And, and there's really no guarantees, even if you get an option, that's a very <laughs> fluid thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a very fluid thing. And so it goes back to your question as to why it took so long. I never shopped these for, for this purpose. Um, I always saw it going. I always saw it in that it had that vision, but I, I never shopped them. I didn't have a, I didn't have a TV film agent. Like some people do. Um, I had a literary agent, uh, but they weren't shopping it. So it, now if you get to that point and you have an agent who is willing to shop it, that's great. But they have to also have some credentials in that that world, mm, yeah. you know. So, mm. yeah, it's not it's not an overnight thing. Yeah. And no, even no, getting no. something made isn't overnight. It's years. Yeah. It's mm. years. Yeah. 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 And what what's interesting to me is that you're actually because these you've got these two different projects and one is you you're completely standing away and they're just going to do whatever they're going to do with it versus yeah. this one where you're, you're yeah. a bit more involved and and that's is that do you know which one is more common can you talk about that a little bit like I think that about? first is more common the first mm. the first with the writer not being too terribly involved mm. and um yeah and, and it also depends on who <clears throat> is attaching to it you know mm. with a bigger name with bigger names, they kind of want the writer to just, you know, <laughs> well, you can come, you can come watch a few days of the filming, but you know, we'll, Back we'll away. call you a <laughs> week, just, right? just shush in the corner there. <laughs> yeah. 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 You and exactly. your, your opinions on what this character, yeah. Because they do yeah. make changes, right? They, they, they'll they mm -hmm. make changes to your character. They'll make changes to the plot even. Like they, yeah. they don't necessarily follow the, the actual mm. plan of your book, right? That's that's right. And, and even with um, the Holly Jennings stuff, uh, I've had to work with the screenwriter and help, like we've come up with ways to adapt it. So there's a lot that we had to cut out mm -hmm. to, to create a 90 minute feature, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of, lot of, lot of it had to be cut and a few things had to be changed due to looking at it from a budgetary mm -hmm. uh, perspective, like, oh, that's going to be really expensive to film that scene. So mm -hmm. how do we accomplish the same thing without without blowing a budget here mm -hmm. right yeah. so yeah. yeah which is kind of I think that's why when people say the books are always better than the movie or TV yeah. show I think that's why mm -hmm. we have to you have to cut out a lot mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah and also like, as the reader you can create that scene there's no budgetary constraints and then you can have you know battle of whatever it is you know Lord of the Rings style honest, if yeah. you want you know <laughs> So yeah. yeah you create what you create mm. in your head what they look like and I think it gives you more of a sense of feeling right mm. you just yeah so yeah yeah is, is there a particular do you prefer one over the other or are you either is fine like what's the I'm enjoying like both processes honestly yeah. yeah I am 
Yeah. So no, I don't have a preference. Um, I love the idea of like, wow, this big kind of a big deal. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and just kind of the element of surprise and, and how are they going to do this? And they're going to, I'll have, I'll be able to be on set and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that'll be really fun. Yeah. But I also really like the idea. I work, I'm working really well with this screenwriter and we're actually now talking about doing something original together, which would be really fun. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I I like doing team stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I've done mm-hmm. I've done a few co-author uh, things, mm-hmm. and I've 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 enjoyed them. So mm-hmm. I like them both for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, wow. that's cool. It's so exciting. It's such it's such an amazing thing to have such a variety of, yeah. of, of, yeah. of projects. Awesome. That, yeah. yeah, that you that you're passionate yeah. about. Mm-hmm. So, are Thank there any time. any advice for authors in this process? Like, is there, is there anything that you've come across where you had to kind of go? figure out how to deal with it or you know anything that people need to think about before they get into a sign an option or get into a relationship with a producer yeah I think honestly and again it just goes back to what we talked about in the beginning always be so okay a couple things always be prepared so if you're if you know that you you would love to see your book go to television, movie, whatever, be prepared. And I'll tell you how to do that is that I knew that I always wanted this to happen. So I took all of my books and I wrote a paragraph on each one so that when I was asked for that, which I was by both these producers, what, what is available? What do you have? You've got a lot of books. What, and not everybody's going to have that, right? But, mm-hmm. but just just to have that ready to go if you get mm-hmm. asked, right? Just start with that mindset that because it's a little bit of timing and a little bit of, of luck, okay? Mm-hmm. And then- um, So you're talking a blurb, a blurb on each book. A yeah, short, yeah a, a blurb, blurb on each book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, just like your back, yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. And then um, be realistic, be hopeful, but be realistic so that, because- and I'll tell you why, like I got the first, the first time this stuff got option, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to have this amazing TV show, it's going to be amazing, blah, 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 right? And then it was like, that's not oh. happening. And then, yeah, yeah. then another option comes along, like, ah, oh, you know, and, and, and so now I've learned to like, and even now, like I, I'm still kind of like, okay, I'm still feeling like I'm in the shallow end yeah. and I'm not going to like I said, it won't be real till I see it on the screen Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of, there's still a lot of things that can happen. So Mm -hmm. one of the things that I keep in mind, and this is what I would say is, is just keep writing. You know, you just, you just have to keep looking at what's my next, what's my next book project. Cause that's who who I really am is an, is an author, right? I'm not a film person. I don't, you know, not a screenwriter or anything like that. I've, I've tried. It's not in my wheelhouse at all. So just keep writing your next project and hoping that this, wow, this all works out. It's going to be really cool. Yeah. Right. It's just like a little bit of like cherry on the top. Yeah. yeah, yeah Love yeah. that. It's great that's advice. Awesome. Yeah. That is great advice. Um, that's all the questions I have. Has anyone yeah. else got any more um, My mind is like, Shoo! Hello. <laughs> I wanted to say, how cool is it for your children yeah. that they are going to have their name attached to this yeah. book, uh, to this um, film if it comes out? I, I got to tell you, I don't think my children, they're all grown, right? Yeah. They range from 21 to 30. I think they saw all the writing struggles, oh. yeah. but they really saw me just as mom like mom takes out the trash mom feeds the dog mom like so it's not like super impressive to them they they think it's cool like they're like oh that's great mom that's so cool now maybe again when they see it like I do like I said if when it's on screen maybe it'll be a little bit more like wow that's you really did it Uh, yeah Yeah. Yeah. well I I, I also meant written by A.K. Alexander which yeah yeah. Yeah. you said it's their names yeah yeah Yeah. which was kind of a neat I didn't think about it when I came up with the pen name um but my oldest Alex said that's really cool mom it's aka right yeah. so also yeah. known as oh, yeah. oh, oh, nice. wow yes. that is cool kids are so yeah. clever yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> smart one 
They're all yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so have you got any final piece of advice for um, our listeners? Anything that you want to, <laughs> if, if anyone embarking on a writing career, some piece of advice that you wish you'd gotten when you were younger or just starting out? Um, I wish that I, I think I wish I'd known it would, it would take this long. Mm. So, so that I didn't get my heart set on certain things and then, you know, mm. but everything happens in the right time, the way it's supposed to is what I've learned. And the best advice that I ever got was from an author named Bryce Courtney, who is a number wow. one best-selling author in Australia, mm. The Power of One. And Bryce, I went to, um, I went to a writer's conference. Oh gosh. I am thinking 25 years ago, maybe more. And I was, we had to apply for, for these courses. It was, it was in Hawaii, which was really cool, but you never saw much of the Island because you were in class the whole time, mm. but there they, they, you applied and there were 10 of us in the group. And uh, it was, he said, bum glue. That's all you need. You glue your bum to the chair and you just start writing, right? Mm -hmm. So whether that's you're a pantser or you're a plotter, if you if you write, if you look at it this way, if you write a page a day, you'll have a book in a year, even if you, you know, even if you do outline, right? Mm -hmm. So just just write. That's that's the best advice I can give. Mm -hmm. Um and and be be kind to yourself as a writer this is not easy and it can be overwhelming and it can be lonely at times and it's uh but I think that's partially why we like it because we're loners a little bit you yeah. know we like yeah. we like social stuff like this but we like our we like our lone time and our our brains you know talking yeah. to characters and stuff so yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome awesome advice and and so if someone wants to um to find out where you like find um find out more about your books or find out more about you where do they go? So my my website is michellescott.com and that's with one L and then I have the website akalexander.net um and my Instagram is just Michelle Scott author same with the TikTok Michelle Scott author I'm still learning all of that we could do a whole nother session on marketing. <laughs> So right. the way. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Always the yeah. way. I'm gonna go and yes. check you out on TikTok after this. Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun. Fun. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's different, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So those those are the places, and uh, I think if you just go to Facebook and just put in Michelle Scott and then AK Alexander, it pops up. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thank but you. So readers should know that um, if you go to my sites, you can actually download a sign up for the newsletter you can download i think i can't remember which books are free but what i think mommy <laughs> may I free mommy may I, you can download and i it might i think saddled with trouble which is actually also i didn't let say that i forgot that's also been option that series for oh, wow. oh, yeah. oh, 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 you forgot actually <laughs> <That, laughs> i actually forgot about the third one <laughs> yeah. that's uh that's kind of you did you ever see the show the ranch on netflix with yes. ashton kutcher yeah oh, so yes. this is kind of yellowstone meets the ranch oh, with wow. murder mystery yeah it's oh. got comedy and drama and humor and this poor woman's always tripping over a dead body. So, yeah. <laughs> as, as, they do, as they do in Cozy Mysteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You got to suspend your belief system for sure. Oh, that's wow. awesome. That's so good. Gosh. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been to us about your experiences. It's been great. Mm, I think we had to have you back minute. one day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. well, I would love to. A anytime. It's been Thank a real you. pleasure. I really, that's yeah, awesome. really loved it. Thank All right. You. So now we know where you can be found. Where can we be found, Sha? So we can be found at spargirlspodcast.com and on Patreon at Spargirls Podcast and on Instagram at Spargirls Podcast as well as Facebook. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you all. Brilliant. Thank you all for listening to another episode of the Spargirls Podcast. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us. Um, we will see you again next time. But for now, farewell. Bye. 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 Bye.